Bongo are the only forest antelope to form herds, which can range from 5-10, all the way up to 50 individuals. The males tend to be solitary, while females and their young comprise most of the herd. Bongo are very shy and disappear quickly into the forest. Trust me this video is very interesting and amazing for you. Don't skip this video, and to watch end. The bongo, Tragelophus uricerus, is an herbivorous, mostly nocturnal forest ungulate. Bongos are characterized by a striking reddish-brown coat black and white markings, white-yellow stripes and long slightly spiraled horns. They are the only tragelophus in which both sexes have horns. The bongo is a large forest living antelope characterized by a striking reddish-brown coat with 10 to 15 vertical white stripes. They have a thin mane running along their back. The two subspecies are the lowland bongo, the western bongo, and the mountain bongo, the eastern bongo. A bongo has white marks on its cheeks, a white stripe between its eyes and nose, with a white crescent on its chest. Its legs have black-white bands, and its long tail ends in a tuft. Fun facts. Bongos are the largest forest antelope. Native people believe if they eat or touch bongo, they will have spasms similar to epileptic. Because of this superstition, bongos have been relatively unharmed in their native ranges. Population counts are sketchy as these are very secretive animals. Even researchers who study these antelope often do not see them. Much of what is known about them comes from captive animals and studies at salt licks on the edge of forests. They have been known to eat burned wood after lightning storms. This behavior is believed to be a mean. Bongos are great high jumpers, but prefer to go under or around obstacles. Bongos use their prehensile tongue to grasp the vegetation they feed on. In order to swiftly maneuver through the dense forest vegetation, bongos tilt their chin up, causing their horns to lie flat against their back. They take this position, so frequently older bongos often have bald spots on their back from the tips of their horns, rubbing away the fur. Bongos are primarily herbivorous feeding on a diet that consists of leaves, bark, roots, fruits, and grasses. Their elongated tongue allows them to efficiently strip leaves off branches, and their strong molars help in breaking down tough vegetation. Interestingly, they are known to consume clay and burned wood, a behavior believed to be related to mineral intake. Despite their bulk, bongos are surprisingly agile and may stand on their hind legs to reach higher foliage, offering an interesting contrast to their otherwise secretive behavior. Due to their large size, adult bongos have few natural predators, although they are not. Leopards and lions are known to prey on bongos but the primary threats often come from humans, in the form of hunting and habitat loss. Wyoung bongos are more susceptible to predation, and can fall victim to pythons, hyenas, and other medium-sized carnivores. Their natural camouflage and tendency to lie low during the day help them avoid detection, but their survival is increasingly threatened by human activities. Eastern Mountain Bongo This subspecies is found in the high-altitude forests of They generally have darker fur and more vivid white stripes, compared to their lowland counterparts. Western Lowland Bongo Occupying a broader range of forests across Central and West Africa, the lowland bongo is less endangered, but still faces threats from habitat loss and hunting. They tend to have lighter fur and less distinct white markings. Bongos are native to the rainforests of Central and West Africa, particularly in countries like Kenya, Congo, and the Central African Republic. While mountain bongos prefer high-altitude bamboo forests, lowland bongos are more versatile and can be found in lowland tropical rainforests, swamps, and even savannas. These habitats provide not only the vegetation they feed on, but also sufficient cover to hide from predators. Unfortunately, their habitats are being increasingly threatened by logging, agriculture, and human settlement. Socially, bongos are not territorial and tend to live in small, loose groups. A typical group consists of females and their young, while adult males are usually solitary and join groups only during. Each group has a hierarchical structure determined by age and size, especially among females. Communication among bongos is limited but effective, consisting mainly of tactile interactions and vocalizations like grunts and moans. They also communicate through olfactory cues leaving scent markings from their preorbital glands on trees and leaves to signal their passage. 